Welcome to Season 4 of the Lounge Pokemon Draft League. My name is Michael, and I have returned once again to give you your mid-season interviews. This is the biggest season of any of our leagues so far, with 13 other competitors reaching for the number one spot in the league, and I interviewed every single one of them. So take a seat, relax, grab yourself a snack or beverage of choice, and enjoy the video. So why don't Super you go ahead excited. and just introduce yourself. My name's Josh. I am the coach for Team Iron Defense. This season, I am part of the Horsey Battle Club. That's a play on the Chelsea Football Club, for those of you at home. Yeah, uh, I'm Jake. Uh, what's my team name even? Currently, uh, Artillery <laughs> Battle Club. Uh, you know, I've uh, been here since season one this is kyle i am the captain of team motif which stands for wait this isn't fantasy football uh, i'm nick uh my team is the fanatic flamigos hi there i'm connor i am uh the coach of the wapaka whimsicots hi my name is chris uh i'm the captain of team potassium oxygen or tko uh <laughs> my name is alex of this uh this season it's the shining Steelix because Steelix is is indeed my favorite pokemon always has been don't know why i'm william i am the team captain for the cerulean city of slow kings my name is gabby my team is the cool guy club my i'm isaiah um my team is the bastion on bulwarks hey guys it's me ben uh coach of the valon rat pack season one was the first time i actually started playing pokemon competitively um in pokemon showdown Kind of had to drop out season three from breaking my hand, so I couldn't really play Pokemon and focus on battling. Um, so now I'm back and better than ever. I've been playing competitive Pokemon for a long time. I don't really remember when I started, but I, when I was a little kid, I started playing Pokemon Sapphire. I really loved it. Uh, didn't really get to play any of the other ones after that for quite a while until White came out. I, I haven't played a lot of Pokemon, but I've played a few games across the uh, across the span of the series, and I've I liked it, but I'm definitely not really a competitive player for the most part. Uh, so I've been playing Pokemon since uh, only since like Gen six. So I mean, I was a little late to the party. As for like my history with competitive, you know, Gen seven uh, singles, you had to you know hunt for the right nature. I would spend a few hours trying to you know. Train up all the EVs and IVs and all that fun stuff. I have played every main series Pokemon game since Pokemon White 2. So pretty casual. Uh, I don't really like to spend the time in game to create competitive teams because I don't want to waste time breeding or IVs, EVs, all that stuff. I like tedium. It's it's weird. I've been really into Pokemon since like heart gold soul silver but like not in it really until like i learned about pokemon showdown in, in like gen 6 about never really got fully into it so like this has kind of been the biggest thing of like okay figuring out team building and like use actually caring enough to use a calculator and stuff like that I've been playing Pokemon since Black and White 1 on the DS when I was like 10 years old. I've been playing competitive since like 5 years after that. I've been playing Pokemon since I was like 5. My first game was Pokemon Pearl. I've only ever been casual prior to joining the league. I've been playing Pokemon since I can remember. Like I think my first Pokemon game was a Japanese version of gold that my dad got on the Game Boy. Damn. But I think the the real I think the real first Pokemon game I remember playing is um your Pokemon Platinum. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the time I I actually remember playing a Pokemon game. Dude, so. okay. So funny funny story here. I I had Pokemon Platinum. You know, we went to Toys R Us at the time when that was still open and Nick goes, <laughs> "Oh, I lost my Platinum. Could I bar could I have yours?" And I go, "Sure." <laughs> I and then later, the later, my dad told me, like, where do you put the Pokemon game? I'm like, oh, yeah, I gave it to Nick. And he's like, why would you give it to Nick? <laughs> I bought that for you. I was like, oh, he said he lost his. So I, I gave I it to him. I still have it. <laughs> yeah, my history of Pokemon, I was in the, the last draft league um, and this draft league, um, last season and this season. Um, and that's pretty much my extent of competitive Pokemon, as you can probably tell by my record, which is not very good. 
Oh, man. <laughs> you, you know me as the crown jewel of losing for the lounge uh, Pokemon League. You know, seasons come and go, and this season is definitely going to stay in the history books for the Valon Rad Pack. Ooh, okay. Well, obviously, with the team logo, it's Iron Jugulus. Hell yeah. And, and, you know, the only reason why is because of the name. My favorite Pokemon's probably Iron Hands. I don't think that's changed. Iron Hands is just the coolest guy. I don't know, usually I'm not as- I don't- I'm usually a sucker for, like, the old-fashioned Pokemon, you know, from the- from when I was a kid. But Iron Hands just does something for me. I don't know. A big robot, defibrillator hands. He just- he hits so hard. And I think- I think, uh, from season one, I'm just still riding that high of hitting those focus punches. I don't know if anything's gonna change that. It feels kind of lame to say some of, like, the big, strong answers, but, like, I have to go with either Tyranitar or Raikou, because, like, those... I don't know why, they just stuck with me. I think I mentioned it in a previous season interview, but it is specifically a Heracross from Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Rescue Team DX. Because in that game, all the hits work differently, where instead of uh, randomizing two through five hits, it, each check, for each hit, has an accuracy check. It has a special skill called Rapid Bullseye, so it hits five hits every time. And I just like pumped all the medicine items, so it's like one challenge. It's incredible. That's why Skilling is such a cool deal for me, and all the hits are very satisfying. So, specifically, that Heracross is my favorite <laughs> Pokemon of all time. I love Poliwhirl. This is a funky, quirky looking Pokemon. And uh, I, I'm a big Dragonite fan. Yeah, Gumi, Spiel, Wooper, big fan of those guys. My girlfriend went on a trip to Europe and she brought back like a like a German booster pack of a, or not booster pack, it was like a, it's a tin with packs inside of it of oh, Pokemon yeah. cards. And she got, she got the one that has Sarah Ledge and Gumi on it because she knows Gumi is one of my favorites and she's great. Aww. Probably Torterra. I never played Gen 4, but, but he's just like, I always thought Turtwig was really cute when I was a kid, so he's just kind of always had a special place in my heart. Uh, probably Grovile. Real ones, no. Oh, right. Mystery Dungeon. <laughs> I, I, it's supposed to be what a secret, a okay? What a nerd! And my favorite Pokemon is Joltik slash Galvantula. Uh, my favorite Pokemon is Girder. In general, it's gotta be Sableye. Always loved the guy since I played Pokemon Emerald up until now. One of my favorites. But on my team, as of current, I think it's gotta be Excadrill. He's so cool, he's a nice sweeper, and I can do whatever I need to with him to fit him on both the Sandstorm team and the Snow team. So far, uh, since we are uh, about you know halfway through the season, uh, how do you feel about your performance so far? You know, I'm not gonna lie, I've been kind of mixed. Like, I feel like I, against you, well, I faced off against you, like, I felt like I did pretty decent, like, yeah. and then against Augustus, like, I was kind of, eh, like, I felt like I could have played that a little bit better, mm -hmm. and then against Kyle, I felt so sad, bro, like, I'm, I'm relying too much on Phalanx, like, to carry, which is not a bad thing, you know, that's, that's kind of like Phalanx's role, like, with no retreat, is to, like, be able to carry, but man, I gotta say, like, that kind of woke me up a little bit but overall my performance i feel has been kind of slowly working its back up way up i face connor so hopefully that goes well and is a is a boost in my ego you know well this video will be going up after the battle so we'll see how that goes okay fingers crossed <laughs> <laughs> the people will already if, if know it doesn't if it doesn't go well then you know what then it's you know we can we can cut it i can i can record me saying how oh man i lost to connor well i'll say this is probably the rockiest start i've had to any season so far not to say that that's bad it, i think part of part of that is just the uh the competition this year has been getting stronger and stronger in years past maybe i've had a you know a, a win streak or something at the beginning but this season it's been uh, I barely won my first game, I lost my second game, I barely won my third game. Um, and it's like, I, I, I'm honestly, I'm just trying to keep my head above the water at this point, but I'm loving it. Oh, uh, well, I am number one as of recording this. This is before the week four games, because I'm guessing this is going to take a little yeah, while a little to come out. Scenes. But uh, I, I feel pretty good about my current standing <laughs> here. Yeah. Um, 
I'm going with number one. I'm feeling pretty good. <laughs> See, I feel like I have that trend, though, where I start out every season extremely strong, and then it just kind of tapers off. <laughs> so hopefully I can avoid that this yeah, time. knock on wood. How it's gone, season three and season four now, where after the draft, I have uh, a moment where I just look back and I think, wow, I drafted a terrible team compared to everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> and I lost to Alex week one, made a few misplays here or there. He had some good reads, but weeks two and three, able to get the win. Uh, looking ahead at my schedule, I play everyone who was not there in the first two seasons. So, yeah. all the new players. I'm liking my chance to make the playoffs, mm -hmm. but not sure how good I'm going to do coming up then. But I'm liking how it's going so far. Made some changes to my team. And the general strategy of that I had going into the draft is still there, but with some modifications but i'm i'm liking it i'd say like a seven or eight out of ten. Oh, i think i could do i could have done so much better i i know that I, I overthink a lot like when even when i play chess i overthink everything so coming into playing pokemon again i overthink i i try to compensate for everything every weakness which i think is not that good that's why you have six pokemons to try to even it out but um, I think I'm doing well right now. I don't know if you've seen my last one, but I my record is two and one, so I'm yeah, not too. I did see. I'm not doing too bad. Week four right now, I'm only two and one. I I have mixed feelings. Um, I I had not a great start to the season, and I think a large part of that is. You know, I'm not that active of a singles player in the first place, and then you, uh, this season, as we all know, it's a low tier draft. So I'm seeing so many mons that I've never seen used before, and I'm having to use mons that I don't really see that often. So I think it took me a little bit to get my footing, especially I've kind of put uh, draft on the back burner, or at least I, I kind of procrastinate building my team. So. You know, for these mods that I don't really know what they do, I don't really take the time to look them up on Smogon, check their coverage moves, check um, like any calcs that might be important, I just kind of wing it. And it really bit me in the ass for the first two games this season, but uh, you know, both those time, both those games I also got unlucky in pretty funny ways, so I'm just in this for the content. If I'm getting unlucky in funny ways, then I'm doing great. So far, um, I'm not feeling too great about my performance. Uh, <laughs> I kind of went into it expecting that um, because I, I know, first and foremost, I've rarely ever actually played a Pokemon match against another person. I'm completely new to uh, Pokemon Showdown, and there's just a lot. There's a really large learning curve. Uh, for competitive Pokemon, in my opinion, and it's a little intimidating to me. Oh man, I don't know. I feel like you know I've been doing just uh, just so awful. You know, I you know what am I third place? Yeah, whatever. It's fine. I've only lost to Jake, who's gonna win the whole season, so it's fine, I guess. I guess I'm doing all right. I feel so far first through the first four games really shaky i'm not gonna lie i feel like my team is a lot more frail than i thought it would be uh i kind of got blown out by jake uh week three and after that happened um i did some looking and i i actually made a good i made three team changes two of them being in my b tier slot i'm definitely more optimistic i think that my team after the changes are a lot better and i think it'll my team will be a lot more competitive um and I, I'm feeling pretty good right now. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm 2-2 right now. Um, and considering I had never, ever played competitive Pokemon prior to this, I'm pretty satisfied with how quickly I'm learning. So, like, you've never just, like, even, like, had any inkling of interest? No. <laughs> I played the games very incorrectly. I would literally order my Pokemon by lowest level to highest level and only go in that order for every single battle. I mean, everybody's bad. had that, like, you know, only attacking moves or only damaging moves phase. Yeah. Well, I think I actually peaked in my first game, um, <laughs> which is funny because my team was probably the worst. 
Um, I don't know if you remember my first game. My I first game, every single one of my Pokemon had a choice item. Uh, you know, I feel I started strong. Well, first game, horrible. That I just wasn't ready for that. Um, I remember that. Second game, second game was awesome. You know, I feel like it really showed my team's strengths. Uh, then games three and four, um, you know, I just feel I wasn't prepared for those. I was just, I just wasn't ready. So expect bigger things for me in the future with better prep and whatnot. You've changed your team name. So what inspired your new name and like design, I guess? See, I was very fed up with how all of the teams were just represented by whatever random character we picked on Showdown. And I thought it was strange how we had team names that was part of the spreadsheet and all of that but that was just never brought up like i was team fish right but that was never relevant in any situation at all and sure what we have now isn't either but i thought well why not spice things up a bit and do what every single other draft league i've ever seen does and make our teams a bit more of a personal touch so i i told everybody to make a little like maybe change your team name if you want but make a little team logo and uh you know give yourself some character give yourself a, a little bit of personality so that way you're not just some showdown avatar you're uh, the horsey battle club or whatever else you might be um and i think a lot of people ended up taking on that little challenge of mine in stride and i think i'm really happy with the results for me personally the only reason i changed my team name was just because I'm a big fan of those, like, parody designs, and I am the biggest Chelsea fan there is who has never seen Chelsea play. I've never watched a single game, and yet I would die for that team. Does that make sense? Yeah, I get it. I kind of get it. Right. So, no, you don't. I don't even get it. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I was thinking, okay, well, what, well, what Pokemon like rhymes with Chelsea and Horsey was like the only one pretty much. It has nothing to do with me and Horsey or any appreciation I have for that Pokemon. It's just because it sounds like Chelsea. You could have done Chansey. No. With the team name and logo, well, one thing was Iron Jugulus was banned. And I'm like, dang it, because I was the Iron Jugulars or, no, 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 you were the I, Iron Joshulers. Joshulers, that's what I was. <laughs> I, I thought I was Iron Jugulers for some reason, but I'm like, okay, I gotta come up with a new name, and I have to, I have to have the design obviously be Iron Jugulus because that's like what my previous name was. So then I based it off of that, and I'm like, oh, you know what? What's a cool name is Iron Defense. Because then you, you know, Iron Defense is like one of those moves that isn't used, right? But it's such a cool name, you know? It's a really cool name. So I based it off of Iron Jugulus, and then I'm like, okay, I, it also goes off of how I built my team. So I wanted to build my team using like knights, as you've seen, is like I kind of wanted a knight themed team. And so I'm like, okay, well, we should make the team name based off of knights. So that's where Iron Defense and the Shield came from. But also, shout out to Eric, by the way, for doing the team logos. Like, he did some of the people's team logos, and mm -hmm. he he changed mine, which is awesome. Like, he made it even better. Because I just did mine on, like, Google, like, drawing and something, and just kind of did whatever. And then he's like, hey, here's a better design. I'm like, awesome. I think I should just point out that my old team name was just like straight up stolen from one of those <laughs> gen 6 draft leagues that i watched it's not really? exactly the most creative name to be like oh don fan sounds like dolphin so miami don fan like you know it's mm -hmm. it's pretty basic and it was stolen as well so it's like if eric's willing to put in the effort to draw a logo might as well be something good which to that note uh, i also have to give huge credit to eric for this because I came to him with the idea of making a logo with Kingdra in it because that's one of the Pokemon that was in my plan for my draft and he misunderstood what I wanted from my logo but he had his own idea as a second thing that he drew and it ended up looking so amazing 
Uh, I loved his team of the Chelsea Battle Club, Horsey Battle Club. Mm -hmm. So having something very similar with Arsenal becoming artillery with the Kingdra looks phenomenal and i'm just really happy with that being the way it ended up originally i wanted to do something with polyworld mm -hmm. you know I, I wanted to do something with have like a little play on words but i couldn't think of it in time and my artistic skills is bare to none but luckily there were some there's some good people in our league that you know step in and help us out I, I kind of wanted to pivot to a location-based team uh, team name. I, I think it's cool, more more sportsy, paying tribute to the sort of um the sort of things that we modeled the draft league after. I don't like live there per se all the time, but I I'm from Wapaka, and I I am a big Whimsicott enjoyer. I think that Mon is is just so cute, very fuzzy. In terms of the uh, the logo, I needed something that both me with my absolute sub-zero level of artistic talent could design uh <laughs> and something pretty punchy so i figure um you know my my uh, the wapaka high school um sports team has like uh red blue and white as their colors so i figure it would be kind of cool to pay tribute to that in the color scheme and then oh. I, I think just the sort of minimalist look of the uh, of the whimsicott just makes it stand out a little bit yeah you combine the red and the blue to make purple and then you have the white That's no no clever. it's just blue i i just completely threw out the the red oh wait is it's it just... i thought it was purple never mind maybe i'm colorblind i think i am colorblind oh uh, <laughs> it depends on how you look at it. It, it somebody who is better at art than me could confidently tell me that's a purple and i would not argue with them all right so i'm editing this part right now it's i, I actually do i actually can't tell like, is this blue or is this purple? I, I think it looks purple, but I don't know. Can someone good at art and colors uh, answer this question, please? Thanks. I was, well, I, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do for a team name. I didn't want to pick a, at first, I didn't want to pick a particular Pokemon or whatever to theme it after because um, I wasn't sure, I wasn't exactly sure what I wanted yet as of the time of figuring out my team name. I wasn't sure what I wanted to draft yet. And... I came up with this little thing. I was like, oh, I mean, it's it's kind of funny, you know, like, TKO, the potassium oxygen. I just thought it was kind of amusing, mm -hmm. and it, it wasn't attached to a specific uh, theme of any kind. The, I mean, the logo, the logo is just like it's just a you know an atomic, a periodic table right, yeah. thing. But but um, the number was uh, I don't remember it was like seven hundred something. I don't remember the exact number, but um, I picked that number because that's the uh, the. The potential max health of a Blissey, and I was, I oh, I don't remember if I drafted Blissey or if I ended up for going that for for the Chansey, um, because I kind of just wanted to get across that I'm gonna have a lot of bulky mons on my team. Obviously, a lot of other people ended up having a lot of bulky mons on their team too, but I wanted to kind of have that as like like I have the Pokemon on my team who has the highest health possible. And then there was another yeah, number. Yeah. It was a. Uh... 324.9 that one i don't i don't know because i'm going to be completely honest eric designed my logo oh, uh, okay. i had i had ideas but he's the one who actually made it yeah um and so that was one thing that i didn't really know what that was about that was the one thing i didn't really specify yeah so it's uh steelix and there's like little there's little rocks around them and it's like mega steelix you know how it has these rocks that float around it mm -hmm. and i figured you know that's circular that works well for a you know circular logo that we're all kind of kind of going for, and uh, then I I trace the Steelix and that's about it. I just really like Steelix. He's a cool he's a cool snake. Um, and that's 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 it. I don't have uh, Steelix. What did Jake? What are you doing on this right. interview? Jake, you're ruining the interview. Get out of here. So I made the logo first. I knew I wanted. Joltik in it. So I, I drew the Joltik in my digital art program. And then I was just kind of messing around with different potential logos. I found this PNG of a skateboard and I thought that it looked like Joltik was doing a kickflip and I thought that was hilarious. Um, and so then I had that and I had no idea what to name it after that until literally Cool Guy Club. It was meant to be a placeholder name, but then I ended up really liking it. Bastion on Bulwarks, I wanted the main reason I wanted to switch it up, Team Curd. While while Team Curd is very uh, adequate for me, after all, my name is just Cheese. Um, 
and that is the case on every pretty much every single platform I'm on. So I'm a really big fan of cheese. I love cheese. Team Curd was kind of just fitting, but Team Curd was also kind of just something that I, I slapped out there at the last second because I wasn't really prepared to have a team name. So I kind of just threw out that and then ran with it. And so for this season, I wanted to actually get like a, a real team name, a team name that was kind of more personalized to my team itself. And then um, when I when I first brought up the idea to Eric that I wanted to have a team that's really cool, like or like really good at defense, like just defensive coverage, defensive typing, stuff like that, he was like, you know who you should play? Bastidon. And I was like, that's actually such a good idea. And <laughs> so we got Bastidon, he was the boy, and he's the the face of the team. The Bastidon really Bulwarks, the logo was um it was it, it's what it kind of was meant to be is just Bastidon's head, but as a wall. Kind of with the implication that like my team is just a wall it's hard to kind of get through you see the one is the name of the big city from the pokemon D, D campaign i've been working on for the last couple months and i feel like it's only fitting because you know unovan i didn't know how to incorporate unova into into my team and i just felt it just felt like i needed to have unovan pokemon whereas um the one is kind of open you know, it's creative, it's different. I don't know, I just needed the team, I just needed the name changed. In regards to this current season, a lot of people have changed their, their names and their logo and how they represent themselves. But you decided to keep yours. Was there any reason why you wanted to keep it? Uh, just because I like having a brand sticking to it. Like when you think of professional teams, they, they don't switch their mascot or team name every year. Like occasionally, team will have a rebrand like they'll move but the players might change the team stays the same i don't know i just like the consistency uh, i think william has kept the cerulean city slow kings name as well but i like other people getting creative with it too maybe having a team name that represents their current team like maybe a certain pokemon but i just like having a generalized team name yeah. uh just something i a little joke I came up with before season one is just stuck and I think it's more about the Pokemon on the team the, the team doesn't mean the team name for me doesn't mean too much but I just like keeping it consistent nice nice it's just more of a yeah consistency having a, a nice whatever continuity between seasons yeah yeah definitely and I, I like that Eric encouraged us to make our own logos too You've seen the create creativity that everyone came up with and I, I was proud of the logo I made uh, with half black and half white representing my first Pokemon game, Gen 5, the Cobalion horns, uh, the Pokeball stretched into a football because <laughs> uh, of my team name as well. Yeah, of course. Yeah, who knew all you could do in Google Drawings? It's not much, but it gets the job done it's sometimes. Work. It's not much, but it's honest work. <laughs> I, I thought it was too iconic. I, I like I really like the name Cerulean City Slokings and even though I'm not gonna lie, I kinda want a new logo. I, I think I think Cerulean City Slokings is a great name and I wanted to keep it. I'm gonna keep it hundred with you. Like I had to design this in like the worst way possible. Um I actually made it in a 3D modeling software. Uh, because I, I was taking a digital design class over the summer. It wasn't actually for like learning how to design stuff. It was more like learning how to 3D print stuff and learning how to create things from vinyl. So I, I made the the logo in the like uh, 3D modeling program that we were using called Rhino. Um, and I had it, I, I, I think I have it somewhere. I can't take a picture of it right now because I'm, I, I'm moving right now and it might be back somewhere. Um, but I, I have a, a vinyl uh, print of the logo. Um, oh, yeah, it's cool. But yeah, I had to I had to make it in the worst software possible, and I, I kind of want to either kind of want to try to get someone else to try to design a good logo because I I'm not very artistic, if you can tell. But I, I tried. So uh, how do you feel about your current draft so far? You know, I really like my team. I have very good coverage overall. I think one aspect is not a lot of teams have good coverage. And I think my team is like one of the exceptions where there is good coverage. But yeah, so I, I've been really liking my team just because I have the opportunity to just like build whatever I want, you know, and just kind of focus on what the opponent is building. And I can just go, oh, yep, I need this guy on my team because he has this coverage. And then, oh, yep, this guy's just good to have in general, you know? 
I'm looking forward to the rest of the season because I haven't really showed my all of my sets yet. I think the only sets I've really shown off is Phalanx, um, maybe Golik. You know, I mm -hmm. I have so much opportunity like in where I'm at right now because of how my battles have been going to really throw off my opponents, which yeah. I'm really happy about too. You know. I like how, well, one thing is I really love how we draft, okay? Because for me, as not as experienced in drafting Pokemon, like, I know what is considered A tier, you know? So I, I have that with me, in front of me, which is really good. And especially with the banned Pokemon, like, yeah, it's like there's A tiers, right? Like... Last season, how we drafted, we did the exact same format, but we had, like, point system. Like, yeah, there's multiple Pokemon in the same point category, but one is obviously going to be stronger in that point category compared to the rest of them. You know, and so with the lower tier, it's like, it doesn't really matter as much, like, what tier you get. Because I chose Phalanx and they're F tier, but I've been doing really well with Phalanx. So there's a lot of opportunity to just do whatever the, the crap you want and just have fun. I think the point system made it so then people can just buy the most OP Pokemon and then just, eh, it doesn't really matter. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I think with tiers, it kind of forces um, you to, ch right, more variety, like, like, if I could buy three A tiers, not have any B tiers, and then just, like, have three C tiers, you know what I mean? Then it's then it's just kind of boring, because you're always bringing the A tiers out, and those are just going to be consistent. You know, like, yeah. the opportunity to just have diversity makes for really good content, I feel. You know, and makes mm -hmm. it also fun, because then you don't feel like your draft was sucky. You know what I mean? Because there's so many Pokemon that you can choose from, I, I feel like D tier should be a, a little bit more expanded. That's just my take. But overall, like, yeah, there's such a variety of Pokemon, and especially with trading, that you have to plan for, you know? So that's what I like about this draft for sure. I, um, my first two games this season were against opponents where um venusaur would not was not like a particularly uh strong choice it just it didn't match up well so when round three came along and venusaur actually matched up well to my opponent i had so much fun because well like i i took entei as my captain because i knew entei would just be solid in every single matchup but venusaur is the one that i was most excited about because when that thing can get going as we saw in my game against Ben, it kind of just wins the game. I don't know. It's yeah. It's been really fun. Would you say Venusaur um, is your favorite uh, Pokemon on your draft so far? I'd say I'd say from that one performance, it might be close, but I've been really enjoying the utility of uh, Hisu and Electrode. Just, it gives me something that I can almost always bring in and make progress with. The raw power of Entei cannot be understated. Just clicking Sacred Fire and just chunking something or burning it or whatever is great. I've been very pleased actually with uh, Sand Slash of all Pokemon though. Mm -hmm. uh, like not that it would be my favorite, but I originally had a Dawn fan on my team at one point. But then I realized Sand Slash was like, you know, two tiers below it and had nearly identical stats and utility. I mean, it's missing a couple things, but the fact that I could just, like, grab a new B tier and replace Dawnfan with something with nearly equivalent, like, utility was so cool. And Sandslash is... Sandslash might end up on every single team I bring, I'm not sure. Just because it does... It, it's so good at what it does. But no, I'm, I'm quite pleased with my team. There's maybe a few things I wouldn't mind switching out, but... I don't know. Kind of just hesitant. I feel like there's, it's got high highs that I wasn't expecting. Like Quillfish has been doing so much better than I could have ever expected it to. But then there's some things like uh, my primate. I look at and I stare at him and I'm like, you're supposed to have a purpose here. And just no matter how much I try to think of it, it doesn't look like I can manage it. So like, 
I think I've got a pretty solid four, pretty solid five, and I can just tack on to it in a way that works for each game, but I don't feel like I'm fully happy with it right now. Yeah. There might like, be a trade or two in the near future. We'll that's see. A, a common trend. But hey, yeah, you have a lot of mm -hmm. trades to, to go for. Uh, I really wanted to get Obama Snow, but Ben drafted that in the second round. Mm -hmm. uh, I did kind of snipe Kilowattro from Alex, though. Uh, my original plan was to have a, a triple weather team. Like, my draft had some fire Pokemon, too, and a few chlorophyll users. My goal is to have Volbeat be my weather setter, because it could prankster at sunny day, prankster at rain dance. And uh, I looked up, using Pokemon Showdown, what Pokemon could get all four of the weather moves, and that was the Galarian Slowbro that I initially drafted, but swapped out right away. Uh, I would have nice to get Snow because I could get the Aurora Veil support as well. And I was hoping to get Snow and Glaceon, because Glaceon is an F-tier, who can also Terra, and with Aurora Veil and the Snow boosting at defenses and special attacks from Aurora Veil, I was going to hope to call Mindset Sweet People with an F-tier Pokemon, but it didn't end up working, but I still do kind of have a little bit of a rain set up working with the Watchroll, Polyrath, and Baratick being able to boost. So, kind of happy with my team, uh, like I said before, and I think I can stick to the rain strategy when needed and pivot away to other strategies when needed as well. Honestly, you know, I'm just gonna put it on record. I watched Poke A Aim MD. I took a lot of inspiration, um, and I I think I drew towards this because I don't really, I never played weather or anything. So the team I built is kind of just like a, just like a regular Pokemon team, you know. Not like you can always set up with Pokemon and and pivot from one another. So it's not like really a niche team. So I can really focus on whatever I want instead of having to focus on like, say, a rain team or like a snow team and things like that. So it's really just, you know, not really much behind it besides just picking the best Pokemon I thought was going to fit. Yeah, originally before I stumbled upon uh, a basics of team that I wanted to build, I wanted to build a, a rain team around Swampert. Mm -hmm. But I noticed in the draft that everybody in front of me were picking weather teams. So I figured if everybody's picking a weather team, I might not get every Pokemon that I need for my team. So I had to pivot in picking, you know, Petra as my first. Yeah. And then just build on from there. I I do really enjoy it. I um I have a friend that I talk with the draft about, um and we were theory crafting it after I had um you know, after the draft was finalized, we were trying to figure out what to do with our free agent trades um mm -hmm. and i it was pointed out to me that i have like i had a crazy low uh speed across all of my mons so <laughs> uh, even though i thought Al uh alola mola was a complete steal and uh especially for like a bulky team the wish support would have been great um uh, he convinced me to switch over to floatzel and floatzel's put in a lot of work i think having a faster mon and especially like a water type mm -hmm. like water's pretty great coverage um it's really put in a lot of work um i'm but like even before that i was really happy with my draft um like a lot of other people this season i think something about the low tier draft just kind of drew people towards weather where we want that sort of like uh like level of power one way or another um and mm -hmm. building a weather team is one way to get it so um i i, I uh you know, I worked the the first day of draft, so my first picks were like I Politoed. I was deciding between whether or not I wanted the uh, a Sunsetter mm -hmm. or to try and build a Snow Team. And I I've never really played around with any weather, but uh, Slow King I think is really good as you know not a snow setter per se um like he, he can fill other roles very well yeah you don't need to put chili reception on it but chili reception is also nice as just like a pivot move um and then uh just having a win button with uh belly drums to titan is just really funny especially because you get him in on his weather so he gets uh plus 50 percent defense so you kind of need to have a special attacker out so um yeah you know, if you don't have a Pokemon that resists both ice and ground, uh, it can be basically just a, a like loss condition. I think Chestnut could hopefully bring some more to the table. I didn't really look 
I didn't look too much into what he could do. I saw his abilities, his possible abilities. Um, I know he's a grass type and, and a grass fighting type, and he's fairly bulky. But I never, I never played uh, X and Y. That was where he's from, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't. I'm not entirely certain what he can do, but I've I've heard that he's a fairly decent uh, contender. As far as like, aside from Smeargle being able to learn whatever, and uh, some of my other Pokemon being able to learn like maybe a few grass, one or two grass moves, I wanted access to more grass moves and uh, and some other options. I'm not entirely. I I love Don Dozo, but I'm not entirely confident in him. I feel like he really he really was a big player in my first match mm -hmm. um, on week one, but other, since then he hasn't really done a whole lot. I should probably be using Misdreavus more. I don't know, um, but I, I kind of use Misdreavus when I feel like I should I should have a special attack, a good special attacker in there, and especially mm -hmm. when especially when there's going to be when I think there's going to be a lot of like ground stuff going on with the levitate yeah, with the levitate ability uh, yeah. i think magmortar i know can be very fearsome but i don't think i've been using it too well so far the slacking i feel like i i know it's difficult to use slacking well um he's really the true aunt really uh is a bit of a problem but yeah um i really like his just his ability to surprise people I, I should probably be using like U-turn or stuff like that to switch him in. I like him a lot. I like the idea of the Pokemon slacking. Yeah, he's a funny. Uh, so Pokemon. that's why I'm not really, not really willing to part with him yet. Um. Well, I would have really liked uh, uh, Kingdra. You know that that would have been that would have been real nice. Uh, but you know, it's fine. I don't need Kingdra. King Kingdra sucks. It's yeah, pff, whatever. Where? Uh, other than that, you know, my team's my team's great. I like how my team has ended up, even though a lot of other people were aiming for the same thing. Uh, I got to steal more Pokemon from other people than other people got to steal from me, so I, mm -hmm. I like that. And this standing's all right. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm doing pretty good. I feel like I'm going to get to playoffs, which I know I had in the last two seasons, so that's pretty good. Uh, I feel really good. Um, I think, like I kind of said earlier, my team was a lot frailer before. I, I had kind of seen Claude, Sire, and Skarmory, and I was just like, ooh, good defensive Pokemon. But it's, even though this is my fourth season, I'm still getting used to draft. Um, mm -hmm. I kind of realized that it's a lot easier to play around those Pokemon if you have prep. And they just kind of felt frail, especially... I, I, I really didn't Skarmory, but I don't think it fits in with my current team anymore. Um, Especially since I dropped Claude Sire, it's it's kind of like a weird dynamic that they kind of synergize with each other, but also because it is draft, they they kind of just fall apart. Yeah. Um, when a team knows they're coming. Um, yeah, for sure. Like there are some Pokemon like that you know are good, and like even if you know what they're doing, it, you still have to mm -hmm. you know just deal with it, kind of thing. Like uh, one Pokemon I know is Scizor. Yeah. Like you know it's gonna bring Bullet Punch, Sword Dance. Uh, probably knock off a new turn, but like you can't stop it. It's just gonna be there. It's gonna be this thing. I don't think I've seen Isaiah bring that Scizor set yet, which is kind of perplexing. Whatever. I, I think he's just run like more general stuff, which is I guess fine. But you gotta you gotta use what Scizor is an A tier for. Listen, man, his A tier is Tatsugiri. We all know it. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot. Um, I'm pretty satisfied with it. I have five more uh free agent trades that i can use but i don't know if i'm actually going to use them because because i'm so inexperienced using the same pokemon every single week is kind of nice for me so that i actually know what i'm doing a little bit um and i've also grown really attached to them like i did not care about chandelure prior to this draft league but it's jumped up in the ranks of my favorite pokemon for sure when i was prepping for uh the draft day i was dead set on getting galvantula um, I actually only joined the league because I wanted to play with Galvantula. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, again, not super, super competitive. I'm just trying to have fun. Um, I like my team. Um, I think that there are probably some changes I could make if I wanted to really um, start to kind of optimize the team. Because uh, I've used, I haven't even used Torterra yet. And I don't know if that's just because Torterra while having a decent typing with the the grass ground like the uh, electric community is nice 
it resists ground, it resists rock, you know. Mm -hmm. But I don't necessarily know if that's best for me right now for rounding out my team. Because um, um, it's just uh, like I, I just haven't ha felt the, the need to bring it yet. Um, and I don't know if maybe there's a team that I have yet to face that will that um, Torterra will be good against. But I just haven't felt like he's really somebody that I, I like bringing with my team. I haven't brought him at all, even. So that, and then I think I might also want to switch out Driftlim, because mm -hmm. I think I brought Driftlim once, but I don't, like, really what I need to do is I need to figure out what I want to do with Driftlim. Because Driftlim, Driftlim is my F, is one of my F tiers, right? So Driftlim's one of those Terra Pokemon. And so in the case where I've got somebody who's got, you know, one or more um, fighting type immunities, I really should be bringing somebody other than um, Bastiodon for the sake of kind of like rounding out the team. Yeah. Because if Bastiodon can't hit you at all, there's really no point. It's just kind of a matter of, of determining that. But if I'm not going to bring Bastiodon, um, I might as well bring, bring Driftlim. So I still have access to that Terra kind of. Um, and I just haven't really figured out what I want to do with that yet. We'll see. I, I do want to keep Driftlim on the team. I think I can do some good stuff with that. But otherwise, I do really like my team. Yeah, um, that's good. Like, uh, I actually really wanted Bramblegast. Um, but that one got sniped by Gabby. I actually asked her if she would trade me for it, too. Oh, I, I, I asked her if I could trade the Levani for Bramblegast. And then threw in that Levani is, in fact, Gen 5. As <laughs> um, to try and convince her for it, but no. Nah. Which it's, I get it. Bramblegast is good. I like Bramblegast. It's um, so funny because like that's not even. I interviewed her. That's not even like what she was going for. It just I know so happened. Yeah. <laughs> it was all Gen Five. And it's her. It, to my knowledge, too, her team's not even that much Gen Five. Yeah. We just immediately started calling it the Gen Five team, and so now that's just what it is. Only five like, out of eleven. <laughs> Our, our Gen yeah, 5, right. but since yeah, the, so... the first four, oops, all Gen 5. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. I'm going to be completely honest. I messed up. What? I think having two different weathers is good, but I cannot balance it a lot. There's some scenarios in which having two is good, but, you know, I've got, my whole team is weak to fighting. If I just stuck with a fire setter, like a, like a sunny day and a sandstorm team, or a sunny day and a snow team, that could have been way better. But right now, we're it's not looking too good. Um, one one boosted fighting type, and my team gets wiped. It's okay. I actually really like your Colossal. Like, honestly, honest to God, I really love how you've been using it this season. Even though, you know, Jake has some words to say, I think it's super cool. How you're, how Wait, you're what, what's, 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 what's Jake been saying about my Colossal? He says that you need to be clicking buttons more instead of tar shot, you know? And he's like, this, you know this what? Colossal just doesn't do anything. I think it's cool. I think, I think Jake is mad that he doesn't have access to tar shot. Exactly. I don't think he understands how useful tar shot is in the long game. Having a Pokemon's weaker fire is insane. That, that brings Pokemon like Empoleon, but that brings Josh has. Mm -hmm. From a neutral resistance, or from no resistance fire to a weakness of fire. And of course, like, it's, it's a great move. And seeing as I can get Fire Flame on my Paladon, I'm gonna get a Fire Move on my um, Exit Drill. There's always a backup Fire Move to use against a Pokemon that can get Fire Shot. That's true. That's really true. Well, I got another question for you. What are some things that you like about the new format of the season? I know we kind of went uh, back and forth a little bit with the uh, the new rules, but how do you feel about them so far? Uh, What new rules? <laughs> <laughs> you know, season four, we have the low tier draft. I mean, oh, that, that one. Low yeah, smash. sorry. No, I completely forgot that this is just like a low tier draft. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is why having the questions beforehand. <laughs> I like how, well, one thing is I really love how we draft, okay? Because for me, as not as experienced in drafting Pokemon, like, I know what is considered A tier, you know? So I, I had that with me, in front of me, which is really good. And especially with the banned Pokemon, like, yeah, it's like there's A tiers, right? Like last season, how we drafted, we did the exact same format, but we had like point system. Like, yeah, there's multiple Pokemon in the same point category, but one is obviously going to be stronger in that point category compared to the rest of them, you know? And so with 
the lower tier, it's like it doesn't really matter as much like what tier you get because I chose Phalanx and they're F tier, but I've been doing really well with Phalanx. So there's a lot of opportunity to just do whatever the, the crap you want and just have fun. I think the point system made it so then people can just buy the most OP Pokemon and then just eh, it doesn't really matter you know what i mean yeah like i think with tears it kind of forces um more variety. you to ch right more variety like like if i could buy three a tiers not have any b tiers and then just like have three c tiers you know what i mean then it's then it's just kind of boring because you're always bringing the a tiers out and those are just going to be consistent you know like yeah. the opportunity to just have diversity makes for really good content i feel you know and makes mm -hmm. it also fun because then you don't feel like your draft was sucky you know what i mean because there's so many pokemon that you can choose from i i feel like d tier should be a, a little bit more expanded that's just my take but overall like yeah there's such a variety of pokemon and especially with trading that you have to plan for you know so that's what i like about this draft for sure no, I I mean, I was one of the biggest proponents to drop in the power level. So I think that's part of why I forgot was just this has been my like, I don't want to say my ideal format, but what I've had in my mind for so long where you, I mean, and we've seen, I mean, a few people have gotten swept, but it is far less of an issue as far as I've seen than it has been in previous seasons because it's like, where there is power, there is also significant drawbacks or weaknesses. It's like, so if something is crazy strong, but it's still low tier, there's almost always some reason for that. Right. And those reasons can be exploited. So obviously there's still some great Pokemon available. I'm not saying that. But because of this format, we're having longer, generally longer games that rely on more creative strategies than you know, click your first boosting move and go to town. Or at least that's what I've kind of been observing so far. And that I'm a big fan of that. Boy, it also, it also boy. because we have uh, the lower tiers, we get to see a way wider variety of Pokemon than what we have seen in the past. I, I don't want to, like, name any names or anything, because it's like, there's so, there's already been so many battles. But, like, the fact that some of these, some of these terrible Pokemon are suddenly like the stars of their of the teams is crazy to me all, all these big threats are so volatile you can't like you can't get comfortable in this format which is awesome as far as i'm concerned yeah. you can't get complacent uh it feels a lot less uh like oh he just has this big strong pokemon that's the end of the game now like especially with how we've seen with some of Kyle's drafts where it just ends up being, oh, other people didn't take all of the super strong Pokemon, so now he took them, and like the rest of his Pokemon are ass, but like that doesn't matter considering he's got Iron Bundle plus whatever else he had, and mm. it's this time it feels a lot more manageable to be like, okay, that is a threat on their team, but I've got this list of options that can at least check it versus oh i need to have hard counter or i am completely screwed i like the fact that we're able to use different pokemon than we traditionally wouldn't have and uh certain pokemon get their chance to shine that would have had no chance against the higher tier pokemon before like volbeat i did draft him last season but what am i going to do not bring one of my legendaries or OU Pokemon for a freaking little bug. But now, since the, the opportunity cost isn't as much, maybe I don't bring Rhyperior, but I bring Volbeat, and it, instead of a strong, physical uh, rock ground Pokemon, I have a, a little Pokemon that's going to mess with you. It's it's not as much opportunity cost. Uh, I also like that Terra is just for F-tier Pokemon, and there are some hidden gems in those F-tiers that are able to do some work. Like we saw Josh with the Phalanx, uh, get some good use from that. Uh, we have Pokemon that have some four times weaknesses that are able to tear out of that and do some work. And 
Uh, for my team, I really like that Gallade is able to do so much work. I think Sharpness is such a really fun ability. And he's not the fastest. He's pretty weak physically defensive. But in this draft, he's actually able to do some work. And I think Gallade is... I mean, I went away from the question, but Gallade is probably my favorite Pokemon on my current team. Dude, I actually love it. I, I watched some of your battles from your previous seasons. And I just say like legendaries and mythics and all that, like the high tier. I don't know if I can hang with it. Yeah. <laughs> I like this low tier. You get to see Pokemon you never get to see. Like, like who's running Basculin? <laughs> <laughs> you are. Like Basculin is different, but Basculin, you never see Basculin. Uh, I do really enjoy the, the variety of mods that we're seeing. Because before, uh, you know, basically every team would have some amount of expected mons, you know, OUUU staples uh, that you would kind of build your team around. And then when you started running low on points, then you would start digging into the trenches. But like the, even some of these A tiers are things that you wouldn't exactly like see drafted in, you know, a league of similar size, like Petra Run, um, Empoleon, uh, Grimmsnarl are like good mons. But I, you know, if you're talking about formats where you get to draft Great Tusk and Chi Yu and, and those sorts of things. It can be a lot harder to fit into a team. Mm -hmm. I also do like the limitations where it, it, like everybody has the same amount of every tier. Because before you could have like a super polarizing team where you have three really, really good mons and then just a bunch of kind of dog water mons. And I just think that's kind of a, a less interesting way to build. I think having to really make sure that your pockets are deep, making sure that your D tiers are just as important to your team as like, you know, your C and B tiers. Um, I, I think this format has really done well with that. Like I've had uh, I've had games where I haven't brought Satitan or Floatzel or like they haven't put in much work. Um, but like Galarian Weezing is always putting in work for me. And, you know, like him on top, Masquerade, great intimidators. Um, Masquerade has webs. These are like, crazy utility mons that um like were not rated very highly um I, it, it's really nice and you know we've there are definitely some other teams where the the lower tier mons are just absolute staples like um you know orthworm being a d tier that's just like a really really solid mod like tatsugiri is one that i was looking at mm -hmm. really nice spinner just kind of gets to drop a draco and then switch out nice typing yeah there's I really just enjoy the uh, the variety and the the sorts of different ways to, to build a team compared to like more traditional format. Um, I think it's a neat system. I do like I do like the uh, the the tier system does make it a little difficult to try to figure out what I want to do. Mm -hmm. um, maybe not figure out what I want to do, but it's it makes it like it makes it difficult to kind of have everything that you want. But I think that that's not a bad thing. Or I just saw last night that Regigigas got put back on the board, so I was like, ooh, I might want to grab him, but I also, that means I would have to give up one of my F tiers, and my F tiers are iconic. Yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe I'll try Regigigas next season if I'm still around for that. Yeah, um, yeah. I think everyone's probably going to say this in the interviews, but just, you know, seeing Pokemon I don't get to see normally thrive, uh, it's, just been, it's just been so nice. Like, I, I am loving how much, you know, Orthwer my Orthworm, my Orcorio, my Ditto has all been, you know, performing well and when it really, they really wouldn't in other seasons i mean ditto can always perform pretty well i guess but yeah a lot of, a lot of the pokemon that, that i'm seeing here uh you know perform so well it's not what you'd expect you know seeing you know, kello Wattrell get some kills uh i don't know what's on the um on the mvp race right now we got ente at the top Blade and venusaur underneath it moltres and phalanx under that like never see that otherwise um, Phalanx I do for sure personally like, prefer the more like free form point based system where you get a pool of points and you get to kind of spend it on you want you what you want. So I do hope we go back to that eventually. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's nice to try you know something different sometimes. Yeah, yeah. I really like that it gives us a chance um, to play with Pokemon that hadn't previously uh, been used before. Like for me, like for Alligator has been kind of like a sleeper MVP in my on my team um but just kind of just all of the new pokemon that we get into rotation this season um i also want to 
mention that we have 14 people, which is the most people we've ever had in a season, and 11 slots per team, all of which have to be filled out. So let me do the math really quick. Times 11, so that's 154 Pokemon being selected, which is like by far the most that have ever been in one of our leagues at one time. And it's also in a league where we're doing low tier Pokemon. It's really great to see like a lot of Pokemon that would never get any love normally uh, yeah. being used and getting their time in the spotlight. Um, I'm excited uh, for when I get to use Poltegeist and I get to go off with that. You know, I think Poltegeist was used in season two by Kyle, if I remember correctly, but I I can't wait to use it myself. Um, yeah. and I think it has a chance to shine here. Um, and everyone just sort of has Pokemon like that where they wouldn't get uh, the time of day normally, but in this environment, they do. Very fun. I've been having, like, I spend, like, a few hours every week, like, di making different teams and, like, doing research and all that. And even though I don't really know what I'm doing, it's still been a really good time. And, like, the competition itself is always a great time as well. I like it a lot more, to be honest. I, I think it's weird when um, people have just all absurdly strong Pokemon. Because, like, obviously when you have access to all the Pokemon, you're just going to pick the best ones. And so, like, this is a very more explicit method of forcing people to have to pick and play with Pokemon that are not as good. And I think that's good overall because it makes for much more interesting watches. Um, especially with, uh, we were kind of, um, at least in Season 3, I feel like there was a lot of sweeps. And I think that's just less interesting to watch. Cause, and it's also just not really fun to play against either. It's not fun to get swept. <laughs> it's just demoralizing. Yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, it's, I think it's overall good for the team. I've enjoyed it a lot. Um, I like the tier system better than the point system. I think we, I think, oh, I think overall we just did a good job with uh, kind of organizing. I, I love the, um, the tier system. I feel like it definitely puts a competitive edge on everybody's team. Um, along with, along with the fact that we are using unused Pokemon a lot, or unused Pokemon. Like, if I, if we weren't doing this, I would have never drafted Colossal ever like not even not even thinking about colossal that's true but now that this happened i feel like it puts colossal in a good light not just for this season but in future seasons as well as people can see the capabilities of what colossal can do as a good switch in for a fire move or even a water move if you're feeling risky um so really just kind of the draft change in general um, trades, you know, they're the same. Terra types, I don't, I don't know how I like the Terra type format, um, but you know. Hmm. So, do you have any ideas for future seasons that you'd like for us to do? Uh, well, I'm very intrigued on uh, William's kind of off-season uh, event that he's going to run with the, the theme draft. Right. I'm not quite sure like what that's going to be, but I'm excited for that. Uh, I think maybe not a season, but this wouldn't be another fun event to do. We have to make teams, but we can only use moves from the usually useless move category. That would. Be and I think that would just be so funny to see how creative you're kind of forced to be. And a lot of the times, we still use moves from that category because in draft, you you kind of know what you can prepare for. Like season one in the finals, Alex. One, because he used Icy Wind, which was the usually useless move on his Hisuian Zorark, uh, to severely damage and drop the speed of my Dragon Dancing Salamence. So I think if we only used those moves, we could get some really funny interactions and really funny sets. Yeah, of course. Uh, and I, I think I wouldn't mind doing another low tier draft too, because there's still a lot of options. I know some people have their favorite Pokemon that are a little bit in the higher tiers, but I think, honestly, the lower tiers are really fun as well. Maybe we go crazy and have like a a team captain, like where you get one banned legendary, but you have to make it level 80 or level 60 or something, and you build the rest of the low tiers. I don't know. Could be a lot of fun ideas around, but I'm wow. really enjoying the low tier season so far, and I'm excited to see what we have store in future seasons as well. My first thought would just be some other like format, like could do like monotype drafts um or like you could experiment with like doubles ou um but i i haven't i don't really engage with a whole lot of draft content outside of 
you know, the lounge. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I don't really have a lot of ideas to steal, you know? Yeah. I, I think just some some sort of, like, format experimentation could be cool. You could even, like, switch, or, uh, you know, national decks, or you, we could just try a different gen one of these times. I have thought about that, to, too. Gen 7 or something. You know, one thing I would like to see for sure is... A baby Pokemon leak? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that that would be interesting, but I, you know, in all honesty, that would just kind of get bland real quick. Yeah. So, um, one thing actually I would like to see is like randomized Pokemon battling. You know what I mean? Like, I think it'd be interesting if you got a random set of Pokemon each week and you had to build that you know what i mean like you get oh i see 10 random pokemon like and it's okay if it overlaps you know what i mean okay like people overlap all the time like when pokemon battling so like you spin a wheel you get 10 random pokemon and whatnot and then you choose from that to build a team i think we've done that before we i could Um, be wrong i don't think we have but, but that does sound interesting yeah but that'd be very cool because then it's always it's always feeling fresh you know like Mm-hmm. And then somebody might have the same Pokemon, like three people might have the same Pokemon, and they build them completely different from each other because of their opponent that they're facing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, but that's what's so interesting is like if you and your opponent repeat, you know, have the same Pokemon, that's what makes it so interesting because all of us vary in skill level. And so we're not going to build the Pokemon the same way. Some of us might build them more, you know, like we might build it more utility based. But I might, if both me and my opponent build Armor Rouge, I might use Armor Rouge to be more utility based. Or I might have the opponent have their Armor Rouge more like carry based, you know, special attack. And I know, I know there's been talk about doubles too, speaking of Armor Rouge, so... Doubles would be pretty fun because that's another challenge for me. I've never done doubles, like competitive Pokemon. So I'd be interested in how I have to learn and adapt to do doubles. Well, I don't know when the next Pokemon game's coming out, but uh, I think uh, I think we. I mean, I know there's been a lot of talk about doing like a doubles VGC type season, that which I think could be quite interesting. Um, maybe in that case we'd like let every Pokemon get picked by two, like at like twice, if that makes sense. So if like two people wanted Cineroar or something, just that way, because because VGC definitely depends, like relies a lot more on these uh, major slick like, staples of the formats. So when like one person gets the best guy who's on every team, it kind of throws things off. I mean, but then again, I, I'm open to virtually anything. Uh, I like the way we did the tiers for the season instead of the points. I think it just makes it a bit simpler. I don't know. I don't I don't have any concrete ideas as of right now. Um, but I'd love to hear what other people have. So this is something uh, that Mitchell actually brought up when, like, me and Josh were talking to him about, like, come on, you should join the thing. And he said, like, uh, he didn't have too much of an interest unless there would be, like, a doubles season somehow. And I think that's something that has been brought up in the past, and I am pretty sure, me specifically, I have been one of the people strongest against a doubles draft league because I'm not sure how well that can work out. But... If we do find a way to make it actually viable for us to do, I think that could be a fun way to mix things up, especially after, you know, four seasons now of doing this, finding a new way to do it would be pretty cool. I think if... I think having, like, a monotype draft would be cool. See how how you would, like, imagine... You're only able to draft water team and you end up going against like an electric or grass team and you have to figure out ways to, you know, <laughs> beat them. <Right. 
<laughs> I mean, it might be very difficult, but... Bro, imagine the mono ground team going against the mono electric team. You're cooked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mono ground team against the mono flying. <laughs> <laughs> Ghost against normal? Oh my god, those would be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, 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 too, I would wonder how we would do that. Like, if we were to, like, draft types, and then we'd have to draft Pokemon from that type. Yeah, I don't know the logistics, but I just think the concept would be funny and cool. That would be fun. Maybe, like, an off-season kind of thing. Like, oh, we'll just yeah. do this for, like, a short, like, maybe six weeks or something. Any ideas for if we did do something else? Like, do you have anything that you'd like us to see? I know you mentioned doubles earlier. Um, yeah, I did mention doubles. So, uh, I have a friend who's like really into Pokemon and he, uh, he like follows the official like VGC stuff. He knows a lot about a lot of different Pokemon and what they can do. A lot of his knowledge is more so on the side of double battles though. I mean, I mean, double battles would be cool. You don't have to do double battles, obviously, but, um, like I, I do think that it's, I haven't really gotten to see it a whole lot. They don't really do it very much in the games, I feel. Mm -hmm. uh, like, they'll they'll give you one or two battles with double battles, but then that's it. They're like, well, that was that. Um, yeah, right. Uh, like and so I would like to to mess around with that more. One, my, my, friend who, my friend that I was talking about, he just really likes... He feels like there's a lot more that you can do in the game, like with the, the interactivity between mm -hmm. the two Pokemon and whatnot. I don't know. I, I'm... I'd like to see oh, once we once we get through the first day of weeks. I'd like to see if uh, if uh, if I could organize like a little a little thing for the or like if if whoever could organize a little thing for the uh, for the losers bracket. Oh yeah, that oh. would be pretty nice. Usually, um, I think that would be f yeah, maybe like a losers bracket sort of thing. I know William has you know something in the something in the works, something cooking there. Um, I will. I've said this before. I said this. Again, I'll, I don't, you know, I'll say it again. Gen 7 draft. Make it happen and get, you know, Megas and Z moves, maybe, you know, two two for one there. Would, would you rather just have like a Nat Dex or do you want just Gen no, 7? Could, yeah, to, to be fair, yeah, that maybe that would be, uh, that might be a little too crazy. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. I, I definitely want more than just Drassalization as the gimmick. Uh, by putting in a different generation though to be fair if we wait long enough legend za is gonna come out in you know five more seasons after this and <laughs> then megas will be back lounge season eight we'll have megas i actually do want to play with megas that that does sound like fun i want to do a double season would be cool mm -hmm. um i think that would be a good thing to mix it up um, but I think just playing around with different levels of what's allowed is good. I wanna, I wanna see the return of Open Terra to anything. Um, I personally really enjoyed Open Terra, but uh, I, I, I get why people don't want it, and I do like that. Uh, Terra captains, especially the low tier ones, give uh, some Pokemon the light of day um, that they wouldn't normally see. I, I would like to see. Uh, open Terra come back, and maybe in an environment where we have uh, little to no bans, kind of like the first season. Yeah, first season was like the Wild West of draft. We we just I whatever. loved it personally. Like I I want to do a do over of that um, because I was not very experienced back then, and I was running like Ting Lu and Wo Chien in a in a format where people were playing like. Urshifu and Chiyu. I don't know if anyone actually had Chiyu, but point being, like, I I, I want like a a very very little sized ban list. Open Terra. I just want I just want all the demons unleashed. I mean, I think I need to go back and watch the previous ones to know exactly what you guys were doing. I think you were doing more OU stuff back mm -hmm. then. Um, I've really been enjoying the low tier stuff because I get to play my Galvantula. I don't know if Galvantula's in the OU or not. Um, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> figured. Um, but yeah, I trust you guys to figure out something fun and enjoyable. This could maybe be out there. I think it would be really funny if uh, instead of drafting individual Pokemon, you would draft like uh, a specific like terrain or weather setting and then just have access to like all of the pokemon that are good for that terrain or weather setting oh, like a i think that would be in, I th yeah i think that'd just be really kind of amusing at least to me i don't know if it would work i don't know if there's a way that you can balance that or make it that interesting 
because like i mean there was some discussion about you know some people running rain teams and but not everybody has a team like a, a weather or terrain that they set regularly yeah. um myself included so like to force everybody into using terrain kind of or weather i think would be kind of funny um that would be kind of but funny. that it would it might be very hard to actually do though so i don't know if <laughs> i don't know if it's um worth pursuing necessarily as uh as a draft idea but it would be funny here's 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 what i've been thinking an lc turn an lc season or a monotype season That's would be amazing i know there's some pokemon like i want to say is direct or duraludon's not an lc no <laughs> you never know it's an unevolved pokemon Actually, something like funny thing, like I think Porygon is too good for LC. Yeah, which is funny. Yeah, uh, I think Ghastly is too good for LC. This is weird things like that. Yeah, uh, but no, LC would be fun. Monotype would be fun. Yeah, that's true. Is are we looking at any chance of a random? You never know. Season? We might. Mm. That's that mainly the why I'm asking this question is just what would you like to see? Maybe that'll spark some ideas for me. I can bring it to the table. See, hey, do you guys think this would be cool? Final question: uh, Is there anything you would like to say to your fellow coaches or future opponents if they're watching? Um. Well, first of all, Ben still really is sad about you picking Obama Snow. I am 100% backing Augustus. I think he could definitely. Make some upsets. Everyone else can go fuck off. Alex, really sad about you beating me week one. Uh, let me think here. Uh, so first of all, uh, this is coming right off. Yeah, this, this interview at least is coming right off my loss from from Jake. And I just want to say, Jake, if you're you know watching this in the future, uh, definitely not now, obviously because you're not here. But if you're watching this in the future, uh, you definitely won only by cheating, uh, and I will get you back for that in the uh, finals when we when we face off against each other again. I'm, I was kind of expecting him to unmute himself, but you know, it's it's fine. You know what? Yeah, just just take it take it to the face, Jake. Isaiah, I don't have too much to say about you, but you've had some really funny sets with a lot of things being choice, so I liked kind of that on Bran. To, uh, to William, I just want to let you know that I'm disappointed that all you know how to do is sweep teeth. Nerd. That's it. <laughs> I thought you were gonna cuss out Eric. No, no. All right, Eric's well. my bae. <laughs> we kiss and make out on this in secret. Uh, Augustus, you have the best voice in the lounge uh, in this league. I mean, fuck off, Gabby. I like that you start with Gen Five uh, only on your team. Then you straight away, but it's okay. Gen Five for the win. Uh, big thanks to William for getting my foundation. Big thanks to Aiden for helping me think of stupid shit <laughs> and future <laughs> opponents. Um, I hope you don't destroy me. Uh, Nick, kind of scared to face you because you've had two sweeps and really good versatility on your team. So I think you're going to beat me. Um, It's fun playing with you guys. I, I haven't had this much fun playing Pokemon in forever, but it's also very stressful. And yeah, I'm, I'm just glad that everybody's having fun playing Pokemon because Pokemon, you know, brings happiness to me. So I'm glad it brings happiness to other people. Uh, Connor, stop thunder waving so much. Stop being a tryhard. Just kidding. You're, <laughs> you're pretty cool. I don't know. Just uh, just thanks for the games. I, I really enjoy the opportunity to be here. And I hope everybody here is having as much fun as I am. It's really nice to have this sort of space where as much as this is like a long-term competitive environment it's ultimately just you know people having fun with their with pokemon like they um i think not having like a whole lot of stakes uh really makes it feel a lot like lighter and i just i enjoy playing with these people you know yeah. uh, i i appreciate everybody here and i i um hope you have good games in the future uh jake you're too lucky to be skilled at this game. Uh, is there anything you'd like to say to your fellow coaches or future opponents? Uh, no. Uh, Kyle, your draft is pretty bad, but your change has been pretty good. What a nerd! Uh, William, 
I think your team's pretty cool. Claude's are, it looks really dumb though, compared to the rest of your team. It's really close right now. Um, I, I feel like I, I could get dropped to as low as sixth at any moment um, with how the standings are right now and maybe even lower. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited that we kind of have like uh, between second and 10th right now, we just have everyone either three and one or two and two. And it's just kind of like, this is a lot closer than last season, because I felt like by the halfway point in last season, we kind of had the playoffs already defined. Yeah. Um, and here, I feel like there's still a good number of people uh, that could miss playoffs, and uh, anyone from 2nd to 10th, I feel like, can make it. Uh, Michael, that guy's pretty cool. Uh, hey. He's just pretty cool overall. I hear he's doing these interviews to bring more content to Lounge. What a nice guy. Hey, thank you. Eric, he streams sometimes. Oh, Michael streams too. More more good on Michael. Michael just looked the best one here. Yeah, Eric, uh, you're, you're a good streamer. You're pretty funny. There you go. I just want you guys to know that um, I'm out here doing my best, trying to play a, a fair game, trying to play a game that's based on skill, talent, and uh, a lot of you guys are cheaters. Relying, relying on luck to win. It's probably going to work on me. I've, <laughs> I've <laughs> lost you a lot of bad luck before, but I'm just here to have fun. Uh, Chris, I like that you have Smeargle on your team. That's funny. And Alolan Gollum. Uh, yeah, I like seeing those galvanized explosions. I guess, uh, watch your back, I guess. I don't know. Ooh, <laughs> fighting words. And Josh, I beat you last week, so get good i have a lot to say um one is to kyle kyle i will get my revenge i misplayed one time and i lost the entire game it's not gonna happen again and then to william i'm sorry for letting you down it won't happen again i will make you proud uh let's see to gabby i'm sorry for messing up and thinking we play um we don't play at all this season, so I'm sorry about that. Um, let's see. Shout out to Jake for always helping me get prepared. But Jake, week six, you're going down. I'm going to beat you then. Um, and then to Ben. Ben, you're a piece of crap and you know it. Moving oh. on. Oh. Um, <laughs> Chris right, and I Connor. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> was, he's going after everybody. <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. And, and that, that's about it. That's about it. Alright, so I actually nice. lied. There's one more question I have for you here. Oh, let's go. I love extra questions, so, and I love lying. In your uh, in real life, what is your base speed stat? Oh my goodness. Uh, let me pull up Pokemon Showdown quick, so I yeah. can like kind of compare myself. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I consider myself pretty athletic. Not the tallest, so... As we know from Pokemon, speed isn't really how fast you can run. It's kind of like... How fast you can react like vika volt it, like it's pokedex entries like say it's super fast or something but then it's it's speed set is really low uh Perugly is faster than it's either latios or latias which are described to go faster than a jet so i think my speed of reactions are pretty fast being a gamer and all <laughs> mm. i don't know i'll just say base 100 base 100 average i can outspeed garchomp right is that like 98 Garchomp's 102. No, it's 102. No! Uh, <laughs> speed stat 103. 103. No speed Garchomp. Let's go. You know that Pokemon is called the mock Pokemon, right? Oh, wow. He's literally yeah, like a it, jet. Speed of, re speed of reactions, though. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Ooh, my base speed stat. Well, it's lower than Kyle's. That's for sure. If I were to like have tiers, you know, Eric and Kyle are really up there because Kyle does karate and Eric used to do track. I'd say I'm about uh, an armor rouge speed, so about a 75, you know? <laughs> I don't, genuinely, I don't know. Um, that's a weird question to ask. I was gonna say, didn't you do track? No, no! I did track in middle school. Oh, in I middle school. <laughs> I can't. I can't get away from it. No, I did cross country in high school. Okay, Charizard's base speed is a hundred. I feel like I'm. I, I feel like I could probably keep up with Charizard. So, 
Charizard uh, can fly, though. Okay. <laughs> um, am I allowed to... Can I, like, use a car? No. <laughs> so, I, I... Okay, what's what's Mudsdale's base speed? I've got stamina, all right? <laughs> Mudsdale's base speed stat uh, is base 35. All right, so I'm 35, but <laughs> I've least. got stamina. Okay, <laughs> there we go. I'm gonna, I gotta look something up quick here. Okay. You gotta see. I'm gonna go with, I'm gonna go with a base 61. That's oddly specific. Do not, do not try reverse engineering that. Could you just like, tell us why? Like, no. Um, I'll probably give it like a 55. 55? Yo, no, that's yeah. crazy. Cause you know, <laughs> I actually looked this up. My base 55 is like the base speed of my champ. So, oh yeah, I'm you built like a Machamp. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want to find a Pokemon that I think I'm like as fast as, and then just use that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna say like 70, but I think I also have Defeatus. Like <laughs> I, I, I get winded very easily. Not that 70 is an impressive speed set in the first place. Um, I, I'm not a very uh swift fellow. My speed stat in real life? What are what are we saying is the average? So. I'd say average would be around like, like around 70, 60 ish. I I would say I'm probably uh, I don't know, probably around. If we're, if we're saying between 60, 70, uh, I would say maybe some somewhere in between there. Probably, I'm not especially fast, but I'm not like incredibly slow either. Yeah, I'm just kind of <laughs> I just kind of move at at an average speed. <laughs> I just kind of move. Yeah, he he, he he swims. I'm not a very athletic person, <laughs> but all right, cool. I'll 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 put you at base. Uh, I'll put you at base 65. That sounds about right, probably. Okay, okay, all right. You know what? You know what? Uh, list is Pokemon by base speed. Okay, last, so let's start down here at the bottom of Serebii's list of top 300. Oh boy. Um, so number 300 is Blastoise at a base speed stat of 78. I feel like I can outrun a Blastoise. Um, I feel like I can outrun a Megmortar. Okay, there's Sock. I feel like that's a fair. So Sock is in an 85 base speed. You think? I, you, you know, would... I feel like 85. Yeah. Yeah, 80, 85. Yeah. You, you say that you you're faster than uh, like a uh, Apom, who's like a monkey. If an yeah, Apom was yeah, was, yeah, was chasing sure. you down. What's Apom? trying to kill you and eat you you think you'd outpace him potentially what's what's an a pump speed 85 85 Ooh, yeah so we'd be matched there hey, it's, a tough, it's a tough call it's a tough call you know those are you know fast little fast little guys i feel like i feel like i could maybe but you know it's it's a match it's a match 85 i like all right we'll all right with 85 base speed stat in real life mm -hmm. um i'm gonna be honest i've never been the fastest i feel like i would probably be around a 70. You're a 70? Come on. Base speed a stat, you said? Yeah. Credit. You're, you're pretty athletic. I, Didn't you do sports in... in I, I did school? do sports, but I was never the fast one. I was always just more technical. All right. Uh, okay, fine. I'm not giving myself enough credit. I'll say 85. 85. 85. There you go. 85. 85. Oh, man. My base speed stat? Probably like... What? 70? Like, not super fast, but also not super slow. Yeah. 70 is an average number. I would reckon I'm probably about 100 to 110. What? That's crazy. Um, Because I am really fast, but I do not have great stamina. Oh. So, like, I'm not a distance sprinter. I can run 100 meters pretty quick. But, like, uh, not for... I'm, I, like, I, I will struggle to run two miles. I will put you as 105. Okay. I can tell you it's higher than anybody else's in the season. Okay. Um, I think if I do compare it to a Pokemon, I'd probably, I'd so probably say, a hundred. I had or... fast. Po I had a fast Pokemon team. I I'd, I'd compare it to that whole team. I'd compare it to my season two team. Okay, but like, give me a, um, give me a number. Oh, um, Reggie Lucky's is two hundred, right? Yeah. I've got one fifteen. 115 that's actually pretty pretty reasonable i guess um and the second question i was going to ask is since he's since i couldn't interview him this time unfortunately since he's so busy this week uh what is augustus's uh base speed stat in real life 
Augustus's base speed stat? Yeah. Closer to 75. 75. I'll, I'll put him there. That's a pretty average number. Is there anything, like, any context, any explanation? He's not the most athletic chum of the bunch. <laughs> Alright, I'll make sure that he watches this clip. I'll clip it, and I'll send it to him. <laughs> Go for it. Hey guys, this is Michael from the Lounge Draft League. Uh, thank you so much for watching all the way through to the end. It really means a lot that uh, people actually listened all the way through. Um, this was a lot of fun, though it was a lot of work. Uh, it was like three hours of collective footage that I had to edit down and condense to about uh, an hour and a half with like twice the people from last season. So, I mean, that was pretty cool. Um, but in terms of future lounge, tree, uh, lounge content, uh, I do want to make some actual videos uh, not just live streams, though the live streams are very fun. But, you know, I'm just afraid that nobody's gonna really care about the the videos. But, eh, you know what, just post it out there and see what happens, I guess. Um, I'm gonna stop yapping. If we do this next season, um, uh, who knows, I might be busy, but I'll try to make something work, you know. Um, yeah, but uh, it'll, it'll be fun. I like doing these interviews. Anyways, I'm going to stop rambling on. Thanks for, uh, for, for your continuing to listen to me and us. Um, I'm Michael, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.